on We're to my region. Actually, the expressionistic reason. And you know what? I'm going to be a, a little a little more brief with my descriptions of these scores. Um, None of these are right, good. So my four scores. Um, <laughs> first one, and I think the biggest hurdle this one has on uh, facing it is uh, that I don't think everyone has seen this film. And it is Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters. Philip Glass I have. is one of my favorite composers. I think about his score both in this film and, and in Jane as well, the documentary from a few years ago, just an yeah. incredible mm, score, yeah. as well as in uh, Koi Anaskatsi's music in that film. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah, that's is, a great one too. He, he is incredible, and he is also one of the most like forward composers in all of his films. He has very boisterous, flamboyant, um, ubiquitous scores that are very essential to all of the films that he works on. And this one especially is so much about these varying tones where you have these real worlds and then these representations of four stories that are sort of metaphorically connected to the real world scenarios and the real life of Mishima himself. And so that one to me is, if you ask me my number one, that's it. It to me is the most transcendent film score that I've ever come across. Um, just mm -hmm. one man's opinion. But um, that's my first pick. My next one is going to be The Lead Can't Be Only Showed Up Once. Originally, I listed The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which is probably his most iconic score. But mm -hmm. I changed it to Once Upon a Time in the West because I think that film or, or that score has a little more subtlety to it. And I mean, it is still at times very big and, and very emotional. And as my uh, region is called, you know, very expressionistic. It'd be much using its mm -hmm. power to evoke certain emotions um, from from the viewer. And it, it can be so tragic and it can be so epic and it can be so adventurous and triumphant. It's it's just this wonderful blend of, of all sorts of different uh, emotions that he imbues uh, across that entire film. Next one is The Piano, which is a film that I love and a score that I love from, from certainly a composer who is not one of the guys you think of when you think about the great, the quote-unquote great composers. But Michael sure. Nyman does incredible work in this film, which is unsurprisingly pretty piano heavy uh but but it does also oh, bring in some some strings and uh and and even some some winds as well uh and and it is really just so evocative just to use that word over and over again but it is it propels that narrative it propels the themes of that movie and it, and it propels the emotion of that movie in such a powerful way that is an incredibly powerful score. Another score that's very much at the front of its movie, but is so effective because I think that is a really hard thing to do. If you put your score so at the front of your film and it's bad, it tanks the entire movie. Absolutely. It, it really yeah. can. Yeah. yeah. And and so when you when you have a score like that that is so essential to the film and it, and is so omnipresent uh, in, in a film and you're able to really make it work in the way that it works in the piano. I think that's that's a really special thing. And my final one is going to be another second Hans Zimmer score on our bracket. And maybe not the one that most people would expect, but I'm, I'm going with The Thin Red Line, which to me, that's a film that has this really unique tone that is so full of dread, but also has kind of this, I don't know if you want to call it fairy tale but maybe this it's spiritual you know spiritual energy to it and mm -hmm. what zimmer has to do is capture both of those tones and he really does an incredible job with that uh and, mm -hmm. and you have jim caviezel in this film who is kind of this innocent who you need to understand as this person who understands not just the nature of war but nature's relationship with war and that is one of the most disappointing parts of that film. And I think Hans Zimmer really does a great job of, of sending that message to the viewer. And that's a score mm -hmm. that absolutely mm -hmm. you can listen to that outside of the film, just listening to it every day mm -hmm. in your headphones, in your car, 
really works just incredible pieces of music yeah, so agree those are my four 